Hi, party people. I started studying for the SE again, and I was taking a look at a problem that's pretty typical. They're asking for the seismic base shear. When I looked at this, I decided that I wanted to use ASCE 722, but the solution in the back of the book for this particular problem used ASCE 716. I hadn't really looked at the difference between the two, but now that I have, there actually are a lot of really interesting changes that I wanted to talk about. So to start this, I thought it would be useful to go over the solution for uh, ASE 716. So in a problem like this, you're given the spectral accelerations here, the site class, and the long period T sub L. The assumption is that the lateral force resisting system is a concentrically braced steel frame that's being used as a hospital building. The first step that you would take is transforming your S sub S value and S sub 1 value into S sub MS and S sub M1 using these site modification factors. From there, you would take two-thirds of that to find SDS and SD1. That's pretty typical. You would go back into chapter 12 here and find your R value. So for a steel concentrically braced frame, you can't go above one story for an ordinary concentrically braced frame. So it's implied in this problem that you're using a special concentrically braced frame. The R value for that is six. Of course, a hospital, it uh, has a higher seismic risk. So your I sub E value needs to be 1.5. The next step would be to find the period so since this isn't uh, any of the special cases from chapter 12, you would just use the general formula of C sub T times the structural height, which for this case would be 40 feet. All of these combined is 40 feet. You'd find your X value based on that. You'd find your T value. These are all in the tables in chapter 12, and you can look it up. They're pretty straightforward to use, so I'm not going to go over it here. Next step, you would take those, plug it into your C sub S equation, and depending on your period that you found from the previous step, you would check your limiting C sub S values. And uh, also, you would be limited by this formula. And there's another limit in there based on your S sub 1 value. Go and check it out. If your S sub 1 value is over a certain value, I think you're supposed to check it. It doesn't apply to this problem because uh, your S sub 1 value is pretty small. So all of this is pretty straightforward. It's what they've been using for a long time. It's pretty similar to ASC 7-10. And the only difference in that one is your uh, site modification factors are slightly different. So what's the big change in ASC 7-22? Well, first, there are two different methods introduced in chapter 11 for designing the response spectrum. Uh, I'm calling a method one and method two. They call them the multi-period design response spectrum and the two-period design response spectrum. So what's the difference? The two-period response spectrum is actually exactly what we were doing in ASC 716. You take your S sub S, S sub 1, you factor them, you take two-thirds, you go through the exact same process here, and they do this just because they wanted to include uh, the historical approach so that people can still use what they're comfortable with. The new method, the multi-period design response spectrum, it's very wordy, very, very wordy. But essentially, to make your new response spectrum, 
you have three steps. The first step, they give you discrete periods that you need to find your spectral acceleration for using the USGS database. This is pretty straightforward. You can just pull it from the website at each one of these seconds, put it into Excel or something similar. The next step, number two, also very straightforward. It just says for any value in between the discrete values we have here, just interpolate. Pretty simple. The third step is where it gets a little too wordy, in my opinion. It's pretty complicated. So I've taken the uh, liberty to actually write it out in a more, I guess, f formulaic way. The first half of what they're saying is if your period is between 10 seconds and the long period, S sub A as a function of T is equal to S sub A at 10 seconds times, make some room here, 10 over T. That's all they're saying. The next half is if your period is larger than T sub L, use a different formula. So it uses the same spectral acceleration at 10 seconds, but the multiplier is now 10 times T sub L over T squared. Pretty simple when you write it down. A little harder to uh, wrap your head around if you're used to the old method, but in reality, it's not too difficult. The next step from this, you get, you get a S sub A as a function of T. And we really don't see too much of a difference here. You use the similar R value, same I sub E value, importance factor. So the next step, again, it gets broken out into two methods. Method number one, they say specifically, if you aren't finding your values in USGS, then don't use method one. The values for C sub S that they do suggest to use, the formula is pretty similar to what we've used in the past. But instead of SDS, like we saw before, SDS over R times I sub E, now you're just using S sub A, right? And S sub A is at the period of your structure. The lower bounds for this one, it's still pretty similar to what it was before. And there's also other checks uh, as well, I think, for method two, but only this one applies for method one. So then what's going on with method two? Method two is the same as 716. There's no difference, not that I could find. So in essence, they are pretty similar approaches between method one and method two. I haven't looked too deeply into why they made this change, but after writing it all out and seeing how it works, I actually kind of prefer method one, the new method. Let me know what you think in the comments, if you like the old method, if you like the new one, or if you think they should use something completely different altogether. Thanks for watching and see you next time.